it's time to start sewing. Make sure that your machine is threaded and that you have scissors nearby to be able to clip threads. We're all set. Let's go. Okay, the first thing, step one on my instruction sheet tells me, here's my pocket piece, I need to stitch the edges 3 eighths of an inch from the raw edge using long machine stitches as shown. Now, this is essentially stay stitching. And the reason that you do this is so that you have a stitching line on which to fold up your edges so that you have finished edge there. But remember how we cut two of these and not just one? And here's why. It's much easier to finish these edges if you just take two of them, sew them together, and then turn them inside out. Automatically you have finished edges. Turn it so that it's right sides together. And you can pin or not pin. But you know you have an inch of seam allowance essentially at the very top because what they want you to do is fold it down and then fold the edges around like this laid on top of your apron front and stitch but we're not going to do that we're just going to take it and we're going to sew all the way around leave an opening and then we're going to flip it inside out the great thing about this is that your pocket can be a little bit deeper i'm going to go to the sewing machine and i'm going to start here at the bottom and I'm going to stitch all the way around and then I'm going to come in within about maybe an inch and a half, two inches of where I started and I'm going to stop. Okay, I've sewn my pocket all the way around. You can see where I've started and then I've stopped over here. In order to make this lay really flat, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim my seam. Now, um, sometimes on a curved edge like this, you can clip right into where your uh, stitching is, but I don't generally like to do that because I think if you trim it close enough that you're going to get a pretty good ability to turn it. Now when you come up to the edge where you've got the corner, trim it at an angle and then just keep trimming. Now I'm going to flip it inside out. Now you can slide your finger um, up in those edges. Just slide your fingernail up in there. If you want, you can have a sharp object that you poke up in there like a pencil point. Or you can take a pin or your seam ripper and you can kind of stick it into the corner there and pull that seam out. I wouldn't work too hard at it just because it's just the top of a pocket. It's not any critical piece. So now I'm going to go over to the ironing board and I'm going to press this. Now when you go to press and you're using a quilting cotton, then I always like to turn my iron up to the highest setting and always make sure it's full of water so I can get steam out of it because I always want to press things really, really crisply. I left that seam allowance. I didn't trim it off at the opening. That means it's easier to tuck in and leave it that way. And I don't really need to sew it closed because I'm going to top stitch this onto the front of the apron. So that little opening right there is going to get sewn shut when I do the top stitching. Step two and three and four are all about finishing the pocket if you didn't do it this way. We're not going to do all, any of that because we already have finished edges all the way around. So this makes it really easy when we go to sew it to the apron front, which is step five. Step five says pin the pocket to the right side of the front matching symbols. Edge stitch the side and lower edges. My dot's going to be right at the corner. That dot is going to match up to a dot that I marked on the front of the apron. So I'm just going to take this and match up the corner to my dot and pin it down. Now it's time to top stitch the pocket down. Now I'm going to stitch um, very close to the edge and then I'm going to stitch again a quarter of an inch away. You may only want to stitch one time a quarter of an inch away. That's up to you. So um, obviously you want to leave the top edge open because you want to be able to stick your hand in the pocket. But I'm just going to start at one corner and go all the way around. Now anytime you stitch something down, it's always a good idea to go over and press your stitches. It doesn't matter if it's a seam, if it's a top stitching, anytime it's always good to press. Okay, so step six tells me to take piece number six. I have to stay stitch the upper edge. Now, the reason for that is because you can see 
it's a curved edge. Anytime you stitch a curved edge, then you want to stabilize it so it's not going to stretch as you sew it. Now, I kind of avoid that step a lot. Um, I'm not going to in this instance because when you're learning, it's always good to do it the way it says to do it. It doesn't matter which side of the fabric I sew it on. It just matters that I go through one layer and I start at one edge and go to the other edge, the top edge. So the edge with the notches in it. Okay, I've gone ahead and day stitched the very top edge of my flounce. Now, step seven says to make a 5 eighths of an inch narrow hem on the bottom of the flounce. What I'm going to do is go over, I'm going to turn it under a quarter of an inch, and then I'm going to turn it under another quarter of an inch, because that's the way I do a narrow hem. I know how to eyeball it. If you know how to eyeball it too, just turn it down once, turn it down again, about a quarter of an inch each time, press, and then go back and top stitch where you pressed. You can see where I folded down my hem and I've got it all pressed. Now, if you are really, really fussy, you can go and you can pin down this whole edge. Now, this is a very stable cotton and I've pressed it with steam, so it is not going to unfold really for me. So for that reason, I am not going to fuss around with pins. And one hemmed edge, all done. Now, as I was stitching that, as I began to stitch, my fabric didn't quite want to grab as I started out. Now, there are a couple of ways to solve that problem. What I did was I grabbed my threads. As I had it under the machine, I grabbed back behind and I pulled a little bit. That's one way. Another way is to just start on another piece of fabric that you kind of butt up against it. You can cut a little piece and start on that and then when you're finished, just cut it away. That's another way to avoid having everything kind of go down into the hole where the needle goes down. You don't want a big globbed up mess of thread. If you do get a big globbed up mess of thread, just work with your, uh, it's called a flywheel. It's the wheel on the edge of your sewing machine. Just kind of work with it and be patient and pull on your fabric as you are turning your wheel. And that'll kind of work that um, those two threads, the bobbin and the needle thread, as you're working them, you can kind of pull on them and that'll straighten it out most of the time and you won't have that big mess. Now because I've gone ahead and sewn this hem, I'm going to go over and press it because every time you sew a seam or any kind of sewing, then you should press it. One other thing, if you're having trouble with it kind of folding a little bit as you're sewing, um, stretch that little folded edge as you sew and that's going to kind of pull those folds out. Now we're up to step eight. We're halfway there. Step eight says pin the flounce to the lower edge of the front, clipping flounce where necessary. That's where having done that stay stitching is really helpful because you did it right on the seam line and if I have to clip, I can clip right up to the edge of the stitching and then I know I'm not going to go past that and make myself a hole that I have to then fix. Okay, so let's pin it down and then we'll do some stitching. Now I have my flounce all pinned to the bottom of my apron. I did clip one um, little area here and that was because as I pinned it on I was stretching and I couldn't get it to quite stretch enough so I just clipped it right up to the edge of that stay stitching and that enabled me to pull this enough to where I could match these edges together and have it be straight. So so now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this and I'm going to stitch it right on top of that line of stay stitching. Okay, I've stitched my seam and like always I'm going to take my pins out and I'm going to go over and press it. I know I sound like a broken record with this whole pressing thing, but boy it makes such a difference when you are sewing in your seams. Now it said to go ahead and press this um, towards the front and I'm taking that to mean up. Uh, you want to go up from the hems. You'll want to finish the seam because it's going to be exposed. You can zigzag the edge and it kind of just encloses the edge. And basically all you do is you set your machine for a wide zigzag. You start at one end and you just sew along the edge of the seam. Now because I have a serger, I'm going to go ahead and just serge the edge. And um, then we're going to turn and top stitch it. 
all, this is going to accomplish a couple of things. It looks uh, nicer because it's going to lay nicer and also it's going to hold that little seam allowance down and that seam allowance isn't going to kind of, it's not going to be loose inside. So it's really, really going to finish it off nicely. So I'm going to search this edge and then I'm going to go back and top stitch. I'm going to set this aside for now because step nine tells me that I need to take my interfacing and I need to fuse that to my waistband. Now steps 10 and 11 tell me to first of all fuse my interfacing to my waistband piece. Um, all you do is lay your interfacing the sticky side to the wrong side of your fabric. Make sure it's the wrong side, not the right side. And then just iron it on pretty much. Now it also says, step 11 says to fold up the seam allowance and press on the unnotched edge. Now that is because this notched edge we're going to match to the top of the apron. and We're going to sew it right sides together and then we're going to fold this thing in half so that when this is sewn we're going to have a raw edge there, a seam, and we need to enclose it. So the way we're going to enclose it is to turn this edge down and then fold it over top of the seam and then stitch it. So that's where this little seam gauge comes in so handy. Now I'm only going to fold it a half inch under and the reason for that is because that gives me a little tiny bit of extra that I can lap over top of the seam and make sure that I catch without having to hand stitch it down. So it's just one of those little things that having sewn a long time I know I've done it wrong enough times to know that that's a little safety measure for me. Step 12 says pin the waistband to the upper edge of the front having side edges at front at small circles. Stitch, trim, and press the seam towards the waistband. Once again with the circles and the markings. Those are usually going to be at the corner of the seam line. I always just pin right at the notches. From there the ends are really easy. You don't really need those circles to match up because you've already got it matched up at the notches. Got my waistband attached. I bet you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Go press it. When you press it, first press it flat, like this. Then press it so the raw edge is facing up towards the folded edge. So press it that way on this side and then on that side. The instructions tell us that we should probably trim this seam. I've got about a half inch, five eighths of an inch seam allowance and I can trim that down. I don't like to do that. I think it lends a little bit more body to the seam, a little more strength to the seam when you leave it like this. Plus it's a little more to grab because what you're going to end up doing is taking this and folding it down over top of that edge. And I just like that there's a little more seam allowance there to grab. So if I trim that off, I'm not going to have that much. So that's why I do it the way I do it. Step 13. Time to use that last pattern piece, which is number four. These are the ties. And my instructions say make a 5 8 of an inch narrow hem on the long edges and the end without the symbols. Now the end with the symbols is the straight across one. The one cut on the diagonal, that's the one that you want to hem. Okay, so we're just going to make the same kind of a narrow hem that we made on the bottom of the flounce. Really simple. I'm just going to go to the ironing board and turn down the hems on each side and then the diagonal end of each tie and then I'll go to the sewing machine and top stitch them down just like I did on the flounce. Okay, got all the edges on my tie pressed. Now when you get to the edge of this diagonal edge, you know what, you have this little tail sticking up. You can see it's where the edges have been turned under and it just comes out to a point. Here's how I fix that. Well, you take and you unfold the slanted edge and then at the very top, about a quarter of an inch from the top, you just snip that tail right off. 
And then when your folded edge is here, and then you'll go to fold this back down. And you have a little bit of a raw edge, but you can kind of fiddle with the end of it a little bit. And what you end up with is a little tucked under piece like this. And I, here's where I did put a pin in it because I wanted it to stay. But you can kind of see. It makes a pretty sharp, nice little pointed edge. So the next step is just to top stitch these long folded edges. Got my two ties completely hemmed. So guess what I'm gonna go do now? Eat some goldfish. <laughs> You thought I was going to say press it, didn't you? Okay, now I'm going to go press it. Okay, now we have some more fussing about dots. My instructions say, with wrong sides together, fold straight end of ties along the fold line. Pin end of ties to side edges of waistband matching symbols, based. Well, I'm not going to do all that. I am going to do some of it, but I'm not going to do all of it because I think some of it is kind of redundant and I think some of it you can accomplish it faster and easier way. So we have the hemmed edges of the tie. It's telling me to fold them wrong sides together. So all I'm gonna do is fold them in half. Now I need to attach them to the waistband. And my instructions said matching the symbols. Well, I know those symbols were down in the seam line. Those circles, same here. These are my two hemmed edges, and I'm going to match, match those up with the edge of my seam line right here, just like that. And I'm not going to take the time to baste. I'm just going to put a pin in it, because that is going to hold that just like a row of basting stitches would. This is going to accomplish the same thing with a whole lot less trouble. Do that on each side. Okay, now my instructions tell me, number 15, with right sides together, fold the waistband along the fold line, stitch the ends, and trim. Okay, now I have my tie attached right here, and it's going this way towards the apron. All I'm going to do is fold this waistband down, right sides together, like this, so that my folded edge lines up with my seam. I kind of am sandwiching that tie end right in between, right there, like that, and I'm going to put another pin in, like that. Now I'm going to stitch down this edge, and by doing that, I'm going to enclose the tie end so that when I flip it back out, my tie is going to come out like this. Um, now I'm going to go back in there and pull this pin out where I had the tie pinned because I went through all the layers and so the tie is sandwiched in there and it's fine. I just don't want too many pins. Okay, I'm going to go down and I'm again going to just stitch from the top here down to the seam line. Hey, we're at the very end. What I'm going to do is this corner right here I'm going to trim this off at an angle, like this. Just like that. And that way, when I go to flip it inside out, I can stick my fingernail down inside there, and then just flip it, and look what happens. My tie end is attached. It's sandwiched in there really nicely. And my inside, this folded edge is going to come down right over top of that stitch seam and that raw edge. I sneaked down there and pressed everything when I before I told you. So I have this uh, folded edge that's going to go right over top of the raw edge but I'm not going over very far. I'm only going over a tiny little bit. And what I'm going to do is pin this all along this waistband edge. I want it to stay down, but I want to top stitch it again from the other edge. And I want to top stitch it really closely. So I want it to overlap just a little tiny bit. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these seams down and then I'll come back and we'll top stitch. And then we'll be done.
Now here is why I hate pens. They always stick me. I hate that when I'm sewing. I hate things to prick me. Those are the two dangers of sewing, burned fingers and pricked fingers. And you also never want to get your fingers too, too close down to your sewing needle because you could puncture your finger. So don't do that. That hurts. Don't do that. Now you can see I've got a nice top stitched edge there that I did from behind and it looks nice from behind too. Now just to do that little extra little bit of finishing work just to make it look more professional from the right side I'm going to start down here and I'm going to go up. I'm going to go all the way across the top. I'm going to go all the way over to the other side. Then I'm going to go down and then I'm going to go really close to that seam line on the other side of that stitching. Here's the seam line. Here's my top stitching. I'm going to go between those two things and get really, really close to that seam line so that it just looks a little more finished. Okay, I've done my last little bit of top stitching. I edge stitched. Actually, that's what it's called is edge stitching. I edge stitched close to the top of the waistband here. And then I also edge stitch close to the seam line uh, where the waistband at is attached to the apron. And then I also edge stitched this edge where the tie attaches and that's really going to strengthen that seam right there and that tie is not going to come off of there very easily. And you know what? It's done! And now you've been start to finish in a pattern, gone to the fabric store, gotten your stuff, gone from start to finish, and accomplish something beautiful. So I hope you did this along with me and if not I hope you are going to after you've seen this. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.